the... What are you guys doing? Starting off the news this week, NASA has unveiled their spacesuit design for returning to the moon, planned to occur in 2025 with the Artemis program. The suit, named the Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit, abandons the white and is a striking new black with orange and blue highlights. Perhaps a little more important than its colour scheme, however, is its use. It boasts extra hazard protection and enhanced mobility allowing astronauts to take on a wider variety of tasks more easily than before. Developed by the external company Axiom Space, it follows NASA's outsourcing trend for the Artemis program, hoping to put more investment into the commercial space sector to help it grow. Boeing and SpaceX are two other companies that NASA will employ the services of to get back to the moon this decade. And in other news, some very exciting paleontology this week, we have the report of the oldest fossils ever found of an ichthyopterygian, the lineage that includes iconic ichthyosaurs, the fish-shaped marine reptiles of the Mesozoic. The fossils in question were recovered from the very early Triassic rocks in Spitsbergen, Norway, and comprise 11 vertebral centra and 15 indeterminate fragments of bone. The identity of these bones as belonging to an ichthyopterygian is pretty certain though, as the anatomy of the vertebra and their internal microstructure is a dead giveaway for these animals. But the truly astonishing thing about this discovery is the position of these bones within the rock formation. They've come from a position just 2 million years after the end Permian extinction, and they actually predate a point in time that marks a transition from amphibian dominated to reptile dominated ecosystems in the planet's seas. Not only that, but the vertebrae are surprisingly large compared to other early ichthyopterygians and have a spongy internal texture, showing that this animal was a fully open ocean-going reptile. So, this study suggests this ambiguous evidence of fully marine adapted ichthyosaur ancestors existing just after the Permian extinction strongly indicates that this lineage in fact evolved before the Triassic at some point in the Permian period. This is a very exciting idea, but it's actually not all that surprising given how diverse ichthyopterygians were in the, early, in the early and mid Triassic. So it makes sense to think they might have had an earlier origin than we can tell from the fossil records so far. A very interesting and exciting discovery for ichthyosaur nerds such as Ben, and hopefully more finds from the earliest Triassic and maybe even the Permian can reveal more about how these fantastic animals evolved. And that's it from us this week. I do hope you've enjoyed seven days of science. And as always, we'll see you on Sunday. Oh my god. Look, I, you're going to have to get over this pretty quickly. Sorry, but he's going to get impatient and we don't have much time. Please just tell me what happened. I can't. Not entirely. He's only just been able to do this and he's no idea how to control it and it's just flooding him with guilt. But if he's allowed a friend to come along and he's allowed you to see what he's doing, then in a way he's desperately asking for help. You want me to help him? I. Look, as I'm sure you've guessed, I'm not from around here. I'm not even here completely at all, to be honest, but that's my problem. Does Ben know about this? He doesn't know the entire thing. He doesn't know that there's more than one of us here, and I don't think I'm the only one, so you have to find the others.